Hey everyone, it's Jason. And guess what? I fired my cleaner. You're fired. When I first started this industry, I had coaching and help from someone, and they let me know it's not if you get rid of your first cleaner, it's when you fire them or when they quit. But you will lose your first cleaner. And I was like, no, you know what? I'm great at finding people. I won't lose my first cleaner. But let's talk a little bit about why I fired my cleaner, lessons I learned from this, and maybe those tough little things I probably should have paid more attention to. All right, so first things first. I opened my place in April for the first showings. March was a long-term rental, as you know. The cleaner itself was a $275 fee. He did all of the laundry off-site. It was an extra $75 fee if he had to clean the grill. So it was about $350 if he had to clean the grill, which, you know, that's kind of expensive. But I was like, you know what? Sure, whatever, it must be what he does down there. So the first thing that happened in April, uh, one of my guests broke the faucet off of the soaking tub. My guess is they used it too as a handle to get into the soaking tub. So this part of this business, right? My cleaner had a handy guy, so I'm like, cool, that's awesome. I don't have to deal with two people. I can just go to one person, wonderful. So he comes over and he had to replace the faucet, replace a lot of the parts with it and actually had to put a hole in the wall to work on the piping in there because it wasn't plumbed quite properly, cool, whatever. Um, and that costs about $700. Signed off on it, good, it's fixed, I'm done with it, awesome, up to date. So then uh, a couple weeks later, got another guest, after they leave, we find out that, hey, it's broken again. So I said, I'll give my guy to fix it. So whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not paying your guy hourly rate and everything again. He was supposed to fix it last time, so why not fix it this time? And he said, okay, fine, my guy would just do it for parts. Get the bill, no itemized, just what I owe you, which was, Red flag, I don't know why I didn't read into it more. You know, we get busy, so it's excuses, but uh, it was $520 for just parts. I paid it, didn't even think about it too much, and then I looked back on it and went, I could just get ripped off. So it kind of hurt my trust with this gentleman. After that point, we started actually looking for a handyman, but that's another story. The next thing that happened is, as I told you in the beginning, we were quoted at $275 a clean and then $75 extra for the grill, which is, I know the grill thing is nuts. Uh, my new cleaner does it for $25, so not a huge deal. So when we first started, it was $275 for each cleaning. And then occasionally you'd see a super dirty cleaning that he had to say, so it was $350 for the cleaning. Okay, fine. Happens once every once in a while. You know, I had one party in the place and like tore everything up, so yeah, I'm gonna pay extra, it needs to be cleaned extra. Then more and more, we needed the extended clean for $350. In fact, last month was his last month with us. 60% of his cleanings were extended cleanings because it was that dirty in the house. So it got me thinking, like, if people stay for a weekend, every time, 60% of the time, it can't be that dirty. Like, All right, I think he's just jacking the prices on me. And here's the third thing, the last final straw. I was reviewing my P&L, and on my P&L, my supplies were really high. So I know I bought a lot of stuff in the beginning, because you gotta get an Airbnb going, right? Then he needed more towels, we bought more towels. Then Two months later, I had to spend another couple hundred dollars on towels. And then in August, he said, I don't have enough towels anymore, I need more towels. So at this point, I'm like, whoa, what's going on? We make him send pictures of things when they're too dirty now, but we didn't before. What he was doing in our mind is to save money cleaning and time, he just tossed a bunch of towels. So I went, okay, this towel's a little dirty, gone. This towel's a little dirty, gone. The sheets get a little dirty, gone. Buy a new one to make his life easier. So my supplies are astronomical for those couple months. No, I didn't break the bank, but this is a business and I have a budget and I need to keep within that budget. As an example, I spent almost $800 on supplies in April to get myself up and running. That's towels, sheets, stuff like that. And I had to spend another $400 two months later for more towels and things like that. I know we run a hospitality business and they can be kind of hard on our towels, but there's no reason I have to spend $400 more on towels and sheets a couple months later, unless you're throwing them out because you don't want to do the work or something like that or they go missing. I know I lost all trust with them and as you know, your cleaner is your most trusted person in the house. I need to know what's going on and everything. That's a little bit about my cleaner and why we decided to part ways with them. It actually went worse than that because when we departed ways, he decided that all the stuff he has at home that he was washing, he's not gonna give back. So I got more supplies. It was a growing and learning opportunity for me when it comes to working with cleaners. And I hope this helps you out so you can watch out for those red flags and not have the same complications I did when the learning curve when working with cleaners. See y'all later.